We're going to get to Robin Jordan on that in just a moment. But first, let's take a check of those power outages around the region. Thousands of PG&E customers in the foothills still without power at this time. Some in the dark now for more than a week as they wait for those lights to come back on. Now, according to the PG&E website, many outages in the Nevada City area may not be restored until around 10 tomorrow night. Ouch. And Placer County declaring a local emergency on Friday after getting eight feet of snow. The county is asking for state and federal help. At least one person has died because of severe weather. Of course, there are far more communities seeing dangerous conditions. Well, our ABC 10 team has coverage of this storm. Jordan tracking the roads while Monica is out in the cold conditions this morning. Okay, first let's check in with Rob, who's been monitoring these storms from day one. Rob, it's almost, you know, okay, another week, another storm, yet down the road on this, we're looking at some dangerous issues here. Right, and I, I don't, you know me, I'm not trying to hype anything, but I'm just trying to get real with people. We've got a lot of very impactful weather on the way, and last week we started to see signs of things lining up, but we just, I just wanted to make sure we could get through the weekend. We saw major snow, we saw road closures, we saw some rain in the valley, but really more of the impacts were in the mountains. Now we're looking at impacts for everybody because while we do see some rain later on this morning, which is uh, just something to be aware of to get through the day, we've got a moment in time where everything slows down. Rain and snow in the middle of this week, and you got to make preparations for all elevations because we've got warmer, wetter storms by the end of this week. And this means heavy rain in the valley, heavy rain in the mountains, and some flooding issues. With that said, it is a Monday. We've got temperatures in the 30s. Very little wind today. It'll pick up a little bit out of the south, 5 to 10, not a big deal, and no issues with visibility. So now it's about timing of the rain. Area of low pressures, plenty of moisture uh, out there to bring it on in, and this overall scenario does not change today or tomorrow. In the mountains, things are, for the most part, clearing up. We had some flurries overnight, but not a big deal. But when this line of moisture moves into higher elevations, you're back at it again with moderate to heavy snow at times. And you can see early this morning, we've got to deal with one line of steady rain right around 10 a.m. to noon and then scattered on and off showers throughout the rest of this afternoon. I've got your long range warmer forecast. And Jordan, I know over the weekend, it was all about the roads. If they were even open at all in the mountains. Exactly. And on Friday, we were talking about how we anticipated that we could see closures along, you know, those freeways up in the Sierra. And we did on I-80. And I like to show this image here. This is Highway 50 at Myers. You can actually see the buildup of snow there on the road and also what crews have done to really plow that and make it accessible for locals. And this is obviously somewhere that many people have to go through when you go from the valley spots toward the South Lake Tahoe area. So just giving an idea of what it looks like in the Sierra. There are chain controls this morning, both directions between Placerville and Myers from uh, the foothills really all the way into the high Sierra toward the South Lake Tahoe area this morning. So really lots of chain controls in that area. I-80, we're seeing them from Alta all the way to State Line. It is open for all vehicles, trucks, and passenger cars as well. And now we have ABC 10's Monica Coleman. She's live along I-80 this morning. So Monica, what's it looking like in Dutch Flat right now? It looks pretty snowy out there in the roads, covered in that slushy stuff. Yeah, the snow is starting to come down this morning and you can see behind me that they've plowed the roads, but it's still very slick out here. Just walking on foot, you can slip. So if you're in a car, you got to take it slow. Take a look. You can see these trucks have pulled over to put chains on their tires and also just to get a break. And the power is out for thousands in Nevada and Placer County. Placer County is currently under a state of emergency. The Placer County Fire Department and Sheriff's Office say they are working together in unified command to do what they can. But residents we spoke to who live in Dutch Flats and across the foothills are asking for more help. They are experiencing no power, no water. They have no access to the internet and nothing. And the officials from what we've spoken to and the county officials, as well as calling the 211, they just keep telling everyone to go online. That's how you're going to get resources. But if they have no power and no internet, how are they supposed to access their website? Residents who are warning others to make a plan if they get stuck in their home have non-perishable items, a generator and battery operated lights. And you can see just how cold it looks. It feels just the same. So if people don't have power, you can only imagine how they are trying to stay warm, but what they have. So they're really hoping that the power comes on. But PG&E says it may be into the middle of the week that they're in the dark. Back to you. 
Monica Coleman reporting live this morning. Monica, thank you. And meanwhile, snow is piling up in the San Bernardino Mountains in Southern California. It's trapping families inside of their homes. A mobile home park in Crestline is seeing collapsing roofs and blockades of snow. It's so bad, several homes are now red tagged, which means they're not safe to live in at this time. People in the area are begging for help as food and resources are scarce. This place is a disaster zone. We don't need anybody that doesn't live here. We don't need any Airbnb beers. We just don't need that here. We stayed up all night because we were just hearing pops and cracks. And then um, my stepdad, he dug out the shovel. We lost our two sheds. Uh, he dug out the, the ladder and we were able to, we spent all day um, taking off tons and tons of snow. That's what a lot of people are doing in that area right now. Cell phone service is another challenge. There are only a few spots in town where locals are able to get a signal to make a phone call. So there's a situation that's even more pressing here, and that's access to medical care. A woman in the same town has missed her last two chemo treatments because of unplowed roads, and now she's likely to miss a third. She lives in a rural part of the county that does not have regular city services, but under these extreme conditions, she says she thought they would have sent help. They're unmaintained county roads. And under normal circumstances in the wintertime, no, they do not plow our streets. And we fully understand that. Uh, but being as it's under a state of emergency in the situation, I, I guess I assumed that they would send someone out and plow our road. Now, she's been told that because of where she lives, her options are to hire a private plow company or she can ask for an evacuation which both of those could still take days. You can find the latest information on weather, road and school closures, breaking news, and everything else on our website, abc10.com. Also on our free ABC10 app, you can also get the hourly forecast to better plan your day.